Okay, so this is the introductory um, episode of Steam TV, and this is where it all starts. And um, without further ado, let's move on. A little bit of history behind this. This is the culmination of uh, around 40 plus years of working in technology and education, uh, initially in technology and then in education, and then being able to use the technology part in education, and then actually teaching technology within education. Um, over the past uh, probably four or five years, I've run more than uh, 100 events in different schools around the country. And um, previously, I've managed and coordinated a number of £1 million plus capital edtech projects, um, changing uh, backbones from cable to fiber, putting in servers, um, exchange servers, web servers, um, SharePoint, a whole bunch of stuff. Our launch partners at the moment are Databot, Dobot, Easy Robot, there's a theme coming along here, Microsoft and PyTop. Looking first at Databot. Um, Databot is a little cube and it's um, about an inch and a half um, cube. It uh, has 16 different sensors in, including things like uh, temperature, light, acceleration, um, other bits and pieces. Um, you can use it for all manner of uh, physics experiments. Um, it can stream data to itself. It has a built-in Arduino. Uh, you can stream data to itself and then output that data to, um, to a PC or to a uh, Chromebook. Or you can actually stream live from the device via Bluetooth onto um, tablet and what have you. It's ideal for creating real world data and fantastic for working with um, Excel and stuff like that. You'll see um, accessories on the screen, uh, thermometer, there's always a USB connector for charging it, a rechargeable battery in there. Um, it's got Lego attachments so you can attach it to Lego devices <clears throat> and it's even got a Velcro um, attachment so you can do crazy things like um, attach it to your Great Dane and make your Great Dane run round and um, see how fast your, your dog is. Dobot is uh, new to us for this term, <clears throat> hopefully coming um, on board later this term. Um, they do a range of um, robots that kind of mirror the industrial type robots. They're, they're um, an arm and claw pickup thing. Um, they can have vision attached so you can make them like uh, you see on the screen. You can do a conveyor belt, pick the blues out or pick the yellows out, uh, shift and move things. The other robot in the bottom left is um, a new bot from them which is packed with sensors and uh, designed for primary schools. It, it's kind of a cool thing. can follow lines, follow lights, do all sorts of stuff. They also do a couple of cool um, 3D printers. Uh, the one with the blue dragon on um, is a single color uh, filament, but it has an interchangeable head. So you can change the head from being a 3D printer to being a laser etching unit. So you can etch metal, uh, plastic, um, steel, that um, wood, that kind of thing. The printer on the right is ultra cool. Um, it'll actually take three different colored spools of filament and it can mix them in the head so you can pretty much get any color you want to be able to print. Well, hopefully they're going to be on board with us um, before the Christmas period. Easy Robot is one of our um, favorite longest using robots. Um, on there in the bottom left you'll see their entry level which is the Adventure Bot. Um, all the robots from Easy Robot feature uh, camera capabilities um, they're all based on the Easy B circuit board, which you'll see up in the top right. Um, 24 channels of digital I.O., 8 channels of analog I.O., 3 I2C high-speed serial channels for controlling LED modules and stuff like that. And the bigger white thing above the 3 I2C sockets is a video connector for the video camera. Up in the top left, you'll see JD, and you'll see um, JD in a lot of the video stuff that we do. Um, JD is a bipedal humanoid, which means he can walk with two legs. Uh, doesn't roll along like some of the other robots. 
Um, he has vision capabilities, he has AI capabilities, and with the um, claw grippers that he's got, he can actually pick stuff up. So you can tell him to pick up a, a blue pen or a blue block or whatever, and he'll pick it up and do whatever you want with it. Obviously, we include Microsoft here. Um, I'm a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. Um, we use Microsoft, um, or try and use Microsoft a lot within what we do. Um, the Microsoft Education Community is a wonderful place for teachers to uh, mix and mingle, swap lesson plans, learn lessons, learn new technologies. There is hundreds of hours of free CPD up there to teach you about robotics, about Lego, Minecraft, um, all kinds of pedagogy is represented up there. Um, it's not just Microsoft stuff. There, there is tons and tons of stuff and it's all free, which is a good thing for education. Finally, uh, we have PyTop and PyTop are I started off with a, a Raspberry Pi based laptop um, which ran its uh, Pi OS which is a, um, a, a version of Linux uh, dedicated for the, the Raspberry Pi and it came with a whole bunch of education tools built in. Um, recently however uh, with the launch of the Raspberry Pi 4 they've actually launched the um, PyTop 4, which is a what I would call a computing device rather than particularly a uh, laptop or a desktop. Um, it has rechargeable power. It has I.O. built in. You can use it f for anything from setting up a computer. You can add a keyboard and a screen to it to building a robot or a weather station or um, even something as cool as um, an Internet of Things model home, smart home type thing, or even build an autonomous vehicle. It, it's, it's a really cool device. In terms of numbers, um, I've probably worked with more, more than 400 schools internationally. Um, I've worked with educators in more than a dozen countries, um, obviously countries all around the world. Um, I've worked with students from kindergarten through to um, postgraduate, uh, actually currently working with University Centre Shrewsbury to um, design an MSc in data science for students who've come from other backgrounds, whether that be like environmental science or um, could be anything really, where they need to use um, computers. Internationally, I've worked with um, countries such as the US. Well, I've worked in the US. Um, I've done work in Canada and the Netherlands and Denmark. Um, I've worked with schools in Turkey and Russia. Um, Australia, Germany, India, South Africa, um, and I've worked with companies in Taiwan, Australia, um, United States, Canada. So uh, we have quite a grounding in, in terms of international reach. In terms of notable awards, um, from 2003 and 2004, I was a US government federal education grant reader um, responsible for reviewing grant applications for um, federal uh, grants for um, education equipment. Um, from 2015 to present, um, I've been a Microsoft Innovative Educator Master Trainer, which means I've worked with in excess of 400 teachers each year. Um, and from 2017 to present, um, I've been a Microsoft Innovative Education Expert, which means um, I'm one of about seven and a half thousand people worldwide who are viewed as thought leaders for um, educational technology and um, try and push things forward, uh, make things more exciting and interesting for students. Um, I've also been a fellow of the Royal Society of Arts since 2018 and work extensively with them um, on STEAM and education. 
I've done, uh, or we've done, um, a lot of EdTech curriculum. Uh, we've developed curriculum for um, the United States with uh, the NGSS, the Next Generation Science Syllabus, uh, United States Common Core. We've worked with the British Columbian uh, curriculum in Canada. Uh, we're working with China currently. Obviously, we're working with England, Wales and Scotland. Um, and we're also starting to do some work with India, um, which I haven't put on there yet because we, we have to kind of working to ratify that at the moment. As EdTech specialists, um, we specialize in obviously STEAM, hence the name. So the science, technology, engineering, art and maths, um, putting that blend of art through everything, uh, making sure that things are creative, not necessarily uh, learners wrote type thing. Um, coding, uh, coding in everything from um, Scratch, Blockly, Python, C Sharp, um, JavaScript, uh, Lua, and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, robotics we work with uh, quite a lot, as you'll probably see. Uh, you probably noticed that anyway through the, the Dobot and Easy Robot stuff. Um, we work with artificial intelligence, um, it, not necessarily the programming of it at this stage, but um, making it um, open and, and easy to understand for students and teachers. So um, using the facilities that are available from the Microsoft Cognitive Services, um, we introduce artificial intelligence so that um, students and teachers can see the capabilities and kind of get fired up about what they can and can't do. Um, the Internet of Things, obviously things like um, smart homes, uh, smart factories, um, autonomous vehicles, all that type of thing. And where possible, we try and embed all this in project-based learning. Um, we have projects that run from basically a week long to things which run like our weather station project, which uh, takes six months to complete and goes all the way through from looking out the window and looking at what the weather's doing to being able to have a weather station on site that connects out onto the internet and out onto the weather underground and then comes back through ifttt.com which is if that then this.com and can do a whole array of things um, which match quite nicely to um, the national curriculum here in the UK. We're developers of three-dimensional curriculum and this is a term that um, I coined uh, probably about six months ago now. The first dimension is alignment to national curriculum because national curriculums are there to be uh, taught by every school. Every school has to, to um, teach them. Uh, but it's not, I, we see it as not teaching things in isolation. The second um, dimension of, of, of our curriculum pieces is an alignment to the real world with real world outcomes. So um, for instance with our weather station project we'll look at things where um, we're actually looking at the data stream from the, the weather station and poll that in the morning uh, early in the morning and um, ask what the temperature is likely to be that day or whether it's going to rain and if it is going to rain or if it is going to be cold then have the software email the um, the student and say you know maybe you should consider wearing a coat today or something like that. Um, the third level of uh, third dimension of our curriculum is um, what we call a C teacher CPD raft and the whole idea of this is that a teacher may not have um, learnt about certain things in college. They might not be aware of autonomous vehicles or what makes an autonomous vehicle. If they're going to teach that, which they should be doing in a classroom, they need to know what they're talking about. So the whole idea is our CPD pieces um, have things like recommended reading, perhaps um, a PowerPoint or a video or something like that, that actually goes in and explains um, what we mean by an autonomous vehicle. So that when um, they go into teaching a classroom, 
um, they're, they're not kind of blindsided by questions that students come up with. And it, it helps them feel more confident and um, it, it provides um, a better learning environment. So that was uh, STEAM TV and it's um, been brought to you by obviously as the STEAM Centre UK, Databot, Dobot, EasyRobot, Microsoft and PyTop. And that's it for today.